Hello friends, James Stevenson back with another short video. I added Ford to the charts that I tweeted out earlier this week that only had GM and Tesla on them, because why not? The more the merrier. Speaking of uh, more the merrier, let's bring in Loki. Good morning, Loki. There he is. There's that little head. Love you. Okay, so uh, Loki still hasn't eaten his breakfast. Maybe he will during this video. We'll see. Let me share my desktop with you and show you this chart. And I'll need to resize. Uh, please hold while I make this window bigger. Oh, that's so much better. That is so much better. And then I'll just drag this across a little bit. Yeah, that's going to work out just fine for us. Sure. Uh, so here's the long-term debt chart that I had made for Tesla and for GM. I did change the y-axis on this one from a logarithmic chart that was doubling with every increment to a standard default y-axis at the request of somebody on Twitter who said, hey, I would rather see this information on a regular axis, not a log axis. The up and the down is more pronounced uh, if you do it as a log. Let me show you what I mean. I just click the logarithmic scale button here. Uh, it looks more like this. Uh, so, you know, you get this really pronounced up and down action. But I'll undo that because this is probably the better way of looking at it. Ford had a lot of debt to begin with 12 years ago, and they still have a lot of debt now. GM didn't have very much debt uh, 12 years ago, and they've been adding to it. Now they stopped adding to it in 2018, and they've been maintaining under $80 billion. And Ford has done an okay job in the past couple of years getting this paid down from where it had been. Uh, so that's the long-term debt page. Of course, nobody has done a better job uh, strengthening their balance sheet than Tesla has. Uh, almost no debt here. That is $1.597 billion. That is not much for a company with a $600 billion market cap. Uh, and, you know, $20 billion worth of cash on hand or whatever. So the next chart here is revenue. Revenue in billions. GM and Ford both looking very similar on this chart. Now this one is still on a log scale uh, to show that Tesla started off with a very tiny amount of revenue. 12 years ago, in 2010, it was $117 million. So just barely off the chart, uh, below the chart back here, but close enough. Uh, 0.125 makes for an even increment when you double this to 250, 500, and then 1 billion. Then you get to go 248, 16, 32, 64, 128, and 256. And you can see how Tesla has been, you know, Every time it passes one of these horizontal lines, it has doubled its revenue. That's how to read this. Uh, so Tesla doubling its revenue on uh, an every couple of years basis for the past 12 years. That's pretty good. Uh, Ford and GM have not been doubling their revenue. Uh, you know, they were at 150, 140. Uh, before COVID, and then COVID hit, and they dropped to 120 or 130, and they've been recovering since 130, and then last year more like 160. So we'll see Tesla uh, up around 160 billion for Ford and, uh, to match Ford and GM pretty soon, the next year or two, uh, and then Tesla will pass them and keep going because Tesla has achieved this selling way fewer vehicles than Ford or GM sell. Uh, the next chart here is free cash flow. Here's what it looks like when you add Ford's free cash flow to this chart. Otherwise, I haven't changed much here. Now, for Ford and for GM, I'm using their adjusted free cash flow that they report. In Ford's case, I actually had to do some math to come up with what that number would have been if they had been reporting it in these uh, early couple of years. Um, by taking their uh, operating free cash flows and subtracting their capital expenditures uh, because they didn't, they didn't have the info in their financial statements. I have to go through their investor relations site to get this information uh, so that people won't complain that I'm just taking the free cash flow numbers from Yahoo Finance that include their financing division or whatever. So they both reported a pretty good number in 2022 
for their adjusted free cash flow, or Ford calls theirs company adjusted free cash flow in the years when they do report it, which has been recently. But uh, yeah, Tesla is showing this very positive up into the right trend every year uh, for the past six years. And uh, Ford and GM have been showing uh, a positive trend since 2020, uh, but not, not much of a trend before that. And the last one here is EPS. I know it's a chart crime to show EPS against each other. I ought to be showing market capitalization, whatever. The, the reason I put this chart together is because that's what John Engel requested four years ago. He said, show it against EPS back when this was the most recently reported information. What he meant was every year Tesla reports negative EPS and up until that time, he had been right. Uh, Tesla had reported negative $5.70. Now I've adjusted all these numbers uh, to exclude the splits that have happened since then. That was the purpose of updating this chart, was to show John what the information he asked for would have been if I had had perfect knowledge or forecasting ability for what would happen over the next four years. What did Tesla do? It reported another loss in 2019. Then, positive earnings of $3.15 in 2020, which jumped up to $24.45 in 2021, again, if Tesla had not split the stock, uh, and up to $54.30 in 2022. What did John Engel expect? Not this. <laughs> he, he did not expect for Tesla's earnings to grow and grow and grow some more. And uh, guess what, Tesla haters? This is going to continue happening. Tesla is going to continue earning more and more money as time goes by. They produce more cars, they sell them to more people, and they uh, work on improving their um, operating profit. Their uh, gap earnings per share uh, will continue growing as time goes by. And that is my video. Uh, so, on behalf of my co-host Loki, who is still sleeping in bed, uh, I will say, if you've enjoyed today's video, click the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, why not go ahead and subscribe to my channel over here and click the notification bell to be alerted whenever I post fresh content. Thank you to everyone who supports me, either on Patreon or by joining my YouTube channel, especially my executive producers, Kathy Kitchler and Halter Ferguson Financial, and I'll see you in the next one.